What is the greatest need of our generation? The greatest need of our day is for the gospel to enliven first our own hearts and then our cities. It is an urban need, but it's not first and foremost for new roads or better housing for the poor, for bigger sanctuaries, or even politicians with deeper integrity. It's not a call for wiser city planning or even for racial reconciliation. The most urgent need of our day is for an awakening of the urban generation. Cities are filled with people whom God loves. The message of the gospel is the only message that can save anyone or transform a life. Cities now represent more than half of the world's population, and yet many, many cities themselves are massively underrepresented in terms of gospel faith and belief. Think what happens when the influence of Christ leaves a city. Many of us have stereotypes about what cities are like, that they're filled with violence or homelessness or racial hostility. But turn it around and think what would happen if the influence of Christ would invade a city and those things began to be reversed. The real question is, can God change a city? Can cities change? One of my personal heroes in the city of Chicago is a man named Daniel Burnham. Now what Burnham is famous for is not his religious background. He was an architect and a city planner. In fact, the building that I'm standing in right now was designed by Daniel Burnham. One of the things Burnham is best known for is writing a plan for city transformation. It was called the Chicago Plan of 1909. And in it, Daniel Burnham envisioned a new Chicago. Our streets are ordered the way they are today because of Burnham. Our lakefront is situated the way it is today because of Daniel Burnham. If it hadn't been for Burnham and his detail and his vision and his artistry, Chicago would be very different than it is today. So can a city change? Burnham believed it could, and it did. But let's think about it biblically or spiritually for a moment. Can a city change? There have been times in biblical history when God changed whole cities, for better or for worse. But think about the moment that God called Jonah to go to Nineveh. He ran in absolutely the opposite direction. Why? Because Nineveh was one of the most wicked cities of its day. And yet when Jonah did preach, we see the whole city repent, from the king down to the lowest commoner. And then the book ends with this question, should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city? Nineveh is an example of a whole city that did change. There have been moments in history where there have been massive outpourings of people coming to know God. Many people think of D.L. Moody and how he preached in Cambridge or in Chicago during the middle of the day and business people flocked out. But there's a less known prayer revival known as the Prayer Revival of 1858 in which a businessman, Jeremiah Lamphere's, got down on his knees and simply began to pray. And as he prayed, others joined him. And they began to show up in that office building and then in other churches. Pretty soon it had spread throughout New York, to Philadelphia, to Pittsburgh, to Chicago, to Cleveland, and to great industrial centers in his day. So it has happened in the past. There have been moments in history where God has changed whole cities. I believe it is possible for cities to be transformed by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe that it is happening today. God can change people, so God can change cities. cities. Cities are a collection of diverse people living together and working together. As God changes the people of a city, He can change the whole tenor, the whole culture of a city. What God is doing in the city, what we haven't seen for years and years, is a collaboration of churches across economic, ethnic, and cultural lines that are moving into communities, that are serving in schools, that are serving in politics, a city that has been divided by economics, a city that has been divided by race, is seeing the church come together. We are very pleased to be in the great city of Chicago. And the great city of Chicago is a city with great needs. We're here invested in the way that we are because we have a great God who meets people at the very point of their need. 
What I want to see God do in the city of Chicago is, 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 is create these epiphanies in the hearts and the minds of young people who feel so disconnected because of systemic issues, because of crime, because of academic kind of challenges. But for them to get the light on to say, yo, I do count. I do matter here. And in the, in the body of Christ, the people of God are the people who can make that happen. One of the major idols in Boston is knowledge. And through gospel proclamation, through collaborative works with other churches, we've been able to enter into that cultural storyline of our city and to be able to see renewal through the power of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I not only believe that God can change the city of Chicago, I believe God is changing the city of Chicago. 100% of our kids graduated from high school last year, 78% uh, enrolled in college. We have 144 kids on the honor roll today. So I see him doing it through the lives of our kids. It's my prayer that God will raise up a new generation of urban Christians who give themselves to a, a radical, cross-centered, gospel-saturated Christianity that spreads from city to city and then to the ends of the earth. If that happens, and I believe that God will cause it to happen, then we'll hear the prophecy of the prophet Habakkuk come true, that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters fill the sea. We have an unprecedented urban opportunity. If we do see the gospel penetrate our cities as never before, then I believe they are bound to become places where racial reconciliation is happening, where there's greater compassion for the poor, where we need expanded church facilities, and yes, where we even have politicians with greater integrity. I'm convinced that as the gospel comes to cities in an unprecedented way, the gospel will also extend to the ends of the earth.